All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at an extension of supply and a contraction in supply. So let's start by taking a look at the extension, which is when there is an increase in price resulting in an increase in quantity supplied. Again, the basics, make sure you label price quantity on your axes. I tell my students not to use P and Q because you're gonna end up using those anyway to label uh, the points along these axes. Upward sloping supply curve labeled S. Again, what I mentioned before, labeling P and Q for your initial point, your initial price and quantity. And then you're gonna take that across to the supply curve. Then I'm gonna highlight in blue what it's changed to, to P1 and Q1. And you'll notice that I've used these arrows here to draw attention to the move. Now what I've seen is sometimes people will do something like this pointing an arrow showing that the uh, point along the supply curve has changed, but that's really not necessary if you do what I've shown you before. Now, if we take a look at the contraction of supply, this is when there is a decrease in price. Let's see, the axes are labeled first. Same thing with the supply curve. But this time, I'm going to highlight to you the starting point is still P and Q. I always like to start with P and Q because from there, changes are a little bit more obvious to the examiner or teacher, and even sometimes to myself or to the to the student themselves, so they know uh, to get into a routine of doing this when they see P, they know things are changing to P1. This helps when you're doing your explanations as well. So P, the price drops from P to P1, which results in a contraction in supply, and we can see that here. There's a reduction in quantity supplied from Q to Q1, and again, in green, I'm going to highlight to you the arrows that we used to draw attention to the change. So it's very clear to whoever is looking at this that we know what we're doing. So a very simple look at extension and contraction in supply. I don't think there's anything too major here, but this is a practice that should become commonplace uh, in your time in this class. And the reason why I say that is all these little things add up. When you go to take your exam, this has become your routine and your habit then it just comes right out naturally and it seems to flow a lot smoother. As a teacher, I like to see all of my students graphing in a similar fashion so they pick up good habits early. So I'd highly encourage you to adopt this practice whenever you're graphing changes in quantity supplied. This is gonna make more sense when you start graphing demand and supply together. Well, for now, get in the habit of doing this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, leave me some comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, email me enhancedtuition at gmail.com, or follow me on Twitter at enhancedtuition. I love to hear from you guys. I'm getting a couple of emails a week now, which is great, uh, from all over the world. So keep them coming. Uh, lets me know that what I'm doing helps and also gives me some direction for what I need to do next. All right, good luck, and I'll see you in the next one.